for your patience. Today, uh, SNAPA welcomes you to the fourth actual stakeholder consultation. This is in a series of multiple meetings we've had all together to talk about the rezonation of LOC. This is part of the larger LOC Pasemper project, which is focused on nature restoration and sustainable use of LOC Bay. Um, as you might have seen, we've already had a couple of really big milestones for the projects, the latest being the watchtower. So if anyone's been to Sorbonne or Lock recently, you've seen these beautiful watchtowers. It's really nice. Uh, already, we've had three stakeholder consultations. The first one was in July, where we introduced the idea of the rezonation plan to you. In September, we met with the maps. Everyone drew their maps. In October, Judith had an extra one in Papiamentu, where we could get the feedback uh, also with the maps. And this one today is to show you how we've consolidated all of your feedback and present to you a draft of, of what we've come up with. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Callie to the stage. Thank you. Um, I know everybody knows Jessica, but maybe just a, a quick word of introduction. So my name is Callie DeMaya, and on the 1st of September this year, I joined Stinapa as their conservation director. So this isn't, in fact, the first time I've been involved in this whole rezonation process, but last time I was sitting there. Life Fund and one of the areas that we felt really needed attention and needed a management plan was luck. So in 1999 we wrote the first management plan for luck and this was the zoning plan that was developed at the time. Obviously the use that's made of luck has changed tremendously from 1999 to today and so the stakeholder workshops that we had were really to hear back from you all about use of the bay, about things that you find problematic, things that you find good, things that you find bad. And as Jessica said, what we've done is we've taken all of that critique into account. We've looked at this and now we're looking forward to a new zonation plan for the bay. So. Some of the feedback that we got, for example, was, I'm not sure if that's big enough for you to read. Can you see it or not? I'll read it out for you, it's okay. So some of the feedback that we got was, for example, that the current zoning that we have, the old zoning plan, is really kind of confusing. There are lots of different zones and it's not always clear what you can and what you cannot do in those zones. Some of the recommendations that we were taking into account when we went back and processed your feedback, for example, the green zone. And the green zone is all the way over here. And this is where we've had a lot of commercial use of the area for kayaking, for example. And there was an ask to slightly expand that area and guided SUP, stand up paddle boards, I'm guessing. So a request that there could be stand up paddle boarding in that area. In the white zone, there was an ask that it should somehow we should include research um, into the allowable activities. In the orange zone, we were asked to take the orange zone out completely. In the yellow zone, we were asked to add slow water sports like stand up paddle boarding, water bikes, etc. And we were asked to convert Boca Jewfish, which is this area right down here, into a yellow zone. In the blue zone, there's an ask, albeit not a very specific ask, to perhaps extend the blue zone outside of the bay. Um, and 
take away some of the areas in the north that have seagrass. The original intent of that windsurf zone was that if you accidentally, for whatever reason, fell off your board, that you wouldn't be inadvertently trampling seagrass. So it has to do with water depth more than anything else. And the pink zone, which you can just see a little bit here, the idea was to expand that, or the ask was to expand that along Surabong. So these numbers here refer to the boxes on there. Does anyone have any questions about this? This was feedback that we got from you, if we missed anything huge. You can't see it very clearly here, but this is all mangrove, all the way around there. It's because we're superimposing images on top of the picture of the bay. But the mangrove, it fringes all the way around Luck with lots of red mangrove on the front and the back and lots of black mangrove in the middle. The other thing that we were asked was to specify the boat channel, which is the channel that the fishing boats, for example, use to come in and out of Luck. Any questions so far? All good? Okay, so this is the, ex the existing zoning plan for Luck. And this is the proposal for the new zoning plan for Luck. So the reason we put these side by side for you is you can see what we're actually trying to do here is make things easier. The white zone stays. Actually, no change. And this white zone, I'll come back to it in a minute, was originally designated as a no-go zone. The idea was you have luck as a Ramsar site inside of a national park. So it's about as protected as anywhere can be. And that that white zone would allow anything that doesn't like us and doesn't like our activities to have a safe haven. It's also where we find a lot of birds roosting. It's also where we have fish nurseries. So we've got lots of nature going on there that we want to remain undisturbed. The blue zone, windsurfing, kayaking, unchanged guys. We still have a blue zone. There's no change in designation. Remember the orange zone we were asked to get rid of. We were listening very carefully. The yellow zone, as we're proposing it now, would become a general recreational area. And the rationale behind that is, in fact, one of the things that we want to see is people using the bay. They need to do it in a sustainable fashion. They may not be damaging nature. We don't want user conflict. We don't want anything that's unsafe. But the idea is to encourage safe recreational use of the bay. By general recreation, this is what we mean. It means beaches, it means swimming, it means snorkeling, kayaking, and slow water sports. And we are reluctant to define exactly what slow water sports are, but when you see them, I think you know them. It's anything that doesn't go fast. So it might be stand up paddle boarding, um, and who knows what comes next, hamster balls, whatever. The green zone, the guided, kayak, guided kayaking activities, again, that zone is unchanged. No, no change there whatsoever. What we've done is taken orange and red and put them together with the yellow zone. So it's a complete simplification. Any questions so far? Nothing? Uh, do you make a distinction between motorized water sports and unmotorized water sports? No, no, I can't think of a distinction. No, any other questions? Yeah. What about recreational fishing? Recreational fishing, we haven't put restrictions on. We could, but we haven't. We haven't put restrictions on. Any other questions? Okay, let's take it to the next one. So, this is your ringside seat to the new zoning plan for luck. And in fact, the first thing that you should see is, actually, there's not very much change. What I'm going to do in just a moment is I'm going to go through this zone by zone with you and explain what has changed or hasn't changed. The no-go zone is the same. The guided kayaking is the same. The windsurfing is the same. Where you see change is a little bit of yellow down here, this which is that general recreation area, a general recreation area there, and something which is a lighter color green here, which I'll, I'll come back and explain to you in just a moment. We've put cross-hatching 
across this guided kayaking area here, because whilst on the one hand that designates the limit of the guided kayaking in the bay, actually it is for general recreational use. It was always for general recreational use. We're clarifying the point, but in fact, as a private individual, you could always go in there and kayak, for example, or use those resources. Okay, so looking at the white zone first, remember this is the no-go zone, the nature zone. No change, guys. We're not proposing any changes here. I know there was some discussion about research. Um, if you want to do research in that area, you would need to come to the marine park. You would need to get a permit to be able to do so. Do we have a lot of research going on there right now? No, not really. Would we be open to having research in that area? Yes, absolutely, as long as it remains a no-go zone. That doesn't mean that you absolutely can't ever go in there. What it does mean is if you want to make use of that white zone, you need the prior permission from the marine park in writing before you do so. So we're not saying that Boy can never go into this zone with a group of walkers, for example. He can do so, but he should be informing the marine park ahead of time, and that should be approved. Why? Because we really want to know what goes on in this zone so that we can make sure that we're really leaving it as undisturbed as we possibly can. So does anyone have questions? Hans, you do. Yeah, uh, I asked for an, an extension of the, of the green zone, uh, that area <coughs> where Sabine was working. We're going to do the green zone next. Is, oh, so is it in the white zone? Well, tell it, me. It hasn't changed okay, come and show me. <laughs> no, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it next. It's in the next slide. Just the white one. Any comments on the white one? Going once, going twice. Yes. Um, on the back, uh, where the water comes in, where it's bringing a lot of sediments in, into that shallow area. Um, is there anything specific planned to kind of? make it more, how do I say, uh, better that the sediments are not going into the water anymore and filling up the back of the bay or it's... So are no you talking back. about the Audi It's the back of the white area. The muddy yes. bit, yes. the Audi Lodo back here. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of concern about water flow. Um, there are people that are looking, for example, in Bakuna, which is off on that side. Um, where they're restoring dams, for example, to try and slow the water down, try and capture the water longer. There's work that Sabine has been doing on that side. They're also looking at the same thing, looking at creative ways that we might be able to reduce, especially the sediment flowing into the bay. So, yes, there's work going on there. Do we have solutions right now? No, actually not. Um, the other thing that we're concerned about are sediments in the bay. And that's also a point of concern. And like sediment transportation in and around the bay is a concern. So you can expect that work to happen in the next year, couple of years. But yeah, there's a lot of concern about that. Any other comments about the white zone? Okay. So looking at the blue zone now, and actually I should have mentioned this up front, but I'll tell you now anyway. These are schematics at the moment. This is not based on exact GPS points. These are schematics indicating a generalized area. So for example, where exactly this boundary ends up laying could shift or change a little, but it's gonna shift or change a little just depending on the water depth, for example, because the idea of this zone is if you fall off your board, you're not gonna be trampling the seagrass, you're not gonna be doing environmental harm in the bay. Uh, so the windsurf zone actually essentially completely unchanged. We're not, we're not proposing any change there at all. Don't take us too literally, like I said, because those lines may move a little, but not substantially. The other thing was about the channel where boats are coming in and out of Lac Cayenne across to Surabong we would also like to see that channel marked. So are we proposing to mark the channel? Yes, we're proposing to mark the channel. Are there any other comments on the blue zone, the windsurf zone? Anyone got any comments or concerns about the blue zone? You are being too kind to me today. <laughs> you are a lovely audience and you can come again. No comments on the blue zone? 
Okay, so now let's turn to the yellow zone. The yellow zone is where we've made some change, not really geographically, but change in terms of how we look at the area. So we're combining the red, the yellow, and the orange. We're talking about a yellow zone which includes beach use, swimming, snorkeling, kayaking, slow water sports, any kind of slow water sports. What we intend to do in future, but we couldn't do very handily here, is also indicate where the beaches are. We heard you, you'd like to see it indicated also that the beach along the peninsula of Surabong is actually a beach and can be used as a beach. The same over there at Luck Kai. General use zone, anyone has an issue with a general use zone? What you can't see on here is that this is also actually a general use zone. You will see it on the next slide where we talk about the guided kayaking, but that is also actually a general use zone. That's our oversight. We should have colored it yellow as well. Any questions about this? Going once. Would that, would that include sunfish also or no? That's, not That's a good question. We haven't thought about sunfish. Sunfish? Mm -mm. No, we haven't had any discussion about sunfish. Uh, if anyone wants to pick up a discussion about some fish, don't think we've had anyone some fishing there, have we? It's those small the, boats with a sail on them. the activities like, for instance, the regatta week, that could be uh, there. So I think it's good to mention the some fishes. I wonder whether you would be able to some fish. Honestly, some fish is not something that we've considered. As far as I know, some fish didn't come up in the discussion. If you want to raise it, we can definitely talk about it and think about it. There are speed restrictions in the bay and there's a lot of other use in the bay. So one of our considerations will be making sure that that doesn't conflict with any of the other uses that are being made of the bay. Francesca. Uh, within the yellow area, those darker area are shallow corals that actually are almost sticking out of the water. So maybe something to keep in consideration, not to change the zoning, but inform people that in this area they shouldn't stand, or I doubt that some fish should pass by that area because it will crash on the corals. Even yeah. the, the windsurfing don't cross that area because it's too shallow. Yeah. So I think maybe, like I said, not require maybe a change of the zone, but a way to, because we have a nursery right now there, so people shouldn't stand. Possibly there. We're going to plant for us as well. So yeah, absolutely. That's a point tackle, very well taken. How to tackle that? Yeah, that point's that very well to... taken. It needs to be clear that you may not walk there. No, yeah. you may not walk there. Correct. Any other comments? We're capturing this, by the way. I have a scribe sitting in the first row, studiously typing everything up so that we don't lose anything from this discussion. Um, any other comments on that yellow zone? For example, yes, yes. This is really just about how we partition use and then those kinds of things will come later. Yeah, okay. All right, so one of the things that we're saying is about the beaches, for example, that we should label where the beaches are. And that's just to show you that actually the zones haven't changed very much. On this, you can see much more clearly that in fact, this area, is also a general use zone. We haven't figured out graphically how to do that very well yet, but we will, we're gonna come back to it. And then we have the green zone. So the green zone is where it gets interesting. And um, the boundaries here are actually unchanged. There was a petition from users to expand the green zone. We looked at it, we thought about it. One of the problems that we have in considering any expansion of the guided kayaking zone is if we expand that zone, we anticipate there will be more companies that will want to move in and operate in this area. And for us, that's a really big consideration. So for that reason, and because that white zone is really a no-go zone and it's really for nature, we're adverse to changing the zone. So this zone is really completely unchanged. We haven't changed the boundaries on it at all. The clarification is that this is actually a general use zone, but it always was a general use zone. We just didn't do a very good job of indicating that before. Um, and then 
we came up with what we think is a really good idea because we do have quite a lot of very low speed water sports happening. And then we looked at this area here, which is Paribadikai, and thought, wouldn't it be nice because you have a, a very safe enclosed embayment there if we made it easy for people to do low speed water sports? So at the moment, it's not used very much in terms of guided kayaking. Most of the guided kayaking is around Krekikoko and in Puitu. And this area here has kind of been a little bit forgotten. So that would mean opening the channels up a little more to give good access. That would mean improving the slipways here, which will help local people, but will also help anyone that wants to go with a stand up paddle board. Uh, and just kind of use this because it is actually a rather safe, sheltered area where people are not going to get blown about too much. And it's not a high traffic area at the moment. And then the discussion was just about where we would put that boundary. But I mean, any feedback on the idea of having an area in Paribadi Kai where we really focus on low speed water sports? Just giving improving access and making that area a little more usable. Any comments on anything else? I think yeah. it's a shame we can't go there now because the, uh, when I asked for that uh, extension, it's only one channel that you're using. Um, not many other kind of operators will go there mm -hmm. because it's out of the way. And it allows us also a little bit to do something extra when people come back over and over again. So now you always you stay in the same area. Yeah. Um, there's not many people uh, but you find it good or bad? <laughs> you find it good or bad to improve access there and to make it into a kind of a little slow water sport hub? No, we have the other side. Oh, I beg your pardon. Sorry. It's good or bad. I think it's good. I was happy. He was. <laughs> I think I might have misunderstood what you were saying, Hans. Tell me again. I don't understand why it's not allowed to use that one extra channel that Sabine has cleared out. Which extra channel? Come and show me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's like, Up here? It's like right, yeah. yeah. So there's this channel here that like from the big one out here, and then you can go there, there's another channel. So he's talking about that okay. channel, and then it goes like a little, a little different loop. Yeah, and so many people that go there. Okay, and so. I asked Sabine if there was anything. Uh, against it, so you saw no problem. And what I was trying to explain was one of our strong considerations when we looked at expanding this north was if we increase the size of that area, we anticipate there will be more water sports operators wanting permits in that area because they're waitlisted already. So the, the kayaking at at the moment, but if we extend the area, what we're afraid of is that that will open the door to having to accept more kayak operators in this area. I know, I know, I know, but you are expanding the area, you're giving more area for the businesses. So that was one of the considerations. Another consideration was, okay, then we give this little bit and then it'll be another little bit and another little bit. And actually that no-go zone was really well thought out in the first place. We really want safe havens. And one of the considerations that we have to take into account is at the edge, you're always gonna have disturbance. So that's kind of at the moment a buffer for the no-go area beyond. We're creeping into an area that we didn't want to see used. We haven't got Sabine in the room or we could ask her directly, so. No, but I've, I've been in a conversation with Sabine and I also agree that there's not a lot of that. There's, I don't think it would be very impactful for the kind of scope of there. The concern isn't that, it's the expanding the space because the five permits was based off the amount of space that was allocated. So if we give 20% or even just like one channel more that opens the conversation with government, so they could say, well, you have more space because they want to add more permits. Snob is the one that's capping it at five. <laughs> yeah. you can, I don't think you can, that's not a good point. I mean, you have five operators, three of them start to take from Kai. So for them, it's way too far to go that far as what the area that I'm proposing. Uh, maybe Ali wants to put the Kai something they want to do. Maybe. But we're not talking about existing use. Our strong fear is if we expand that area, there will be pressure to allow new people to come in with kayaking businesses. 
there's, so there's, there's, no more there's a wait list. So if we expand that area at the moment, Expand the zone and you're going to get more operators. That's what we're saying. So we've capped it and we want to keep the cap. And that means we keep the size of the area the same. Then there's no discussion. Then there's simply no discussion. Was there another comment or question, Julie? Are they the particular distance apart? Could you like put that into the plan? So this one has to be so many meters away from that one and that one? No. No. This one the no. Any other questions? Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. We were, or you were talking about the light green area, what you put in there to have more activities possible there or more uh, uh, people joining, uh, enjoying that area. Um, is the access given from, not from the yellow side, but from the island side, no, from the other side, the island, no, further to get from that side. Is that uh, um, possible having an exit or an entry into that green zone? We've given that absolutely no thought. We could think about it. Um, when we were looking at the area, we were looking at the access zones actually yeah. at Paribidikai, which are old and slippery and not easy to navigate. And we figured that, yeah, spit and polish there, that would be really good. And it's a suggestion. We can also say, no, it's just a general use zone and leave it at that. Um, we had not thought about providing access points here. Well, maybe uh, not providing ac um, access, but how to say, do you have any restrictions on that part where, where you have the, the white mangroves uh, sitting and it shows like a little eye? Yes, well, then. here only yes. that there, there isn't easy access there, so nobody is at the moment. And, and there's also no restrictions. If someone got, wants to go there and finds his little way to go in, there is no, um, how to say, opposition from uh, the, the marine park to do that. If they go in and start slashing the trees down to create the access, course, there would yeah. be an issue. Yeah. But otherwise, in principle, no. No, no issues. No. And it's certainly something that we can look at. We just haven't looked at it. And I'm sure someone's already bushwhacked their way through. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, are we good? Yes. Okay. Um, the other point that we want to make here is that we have not created a zone for foiling. And there are lots of considerations about that. We know that we're going to have a lot of dialogue about it. It's based on user safety, first and foremost. It's based on the carrying capacity of the bay. The bay is only a finite size. There's only so much you can do in the bay safely. And it's based on nature considerations. We want the discussion about this to start next year. And it's the Marine Park's strong desire to work with the businesses and work with the individuals that are foiling now to find somewhere that they can foil safely. It's our strong desire. We're not after shutting anything down. We're saying it's not appropriate in luck. We can't find it appropriate in luck. And for that reason, we've not included a zone for foiling in luck. That means that we're gonna have discussion. We anticipate the discussion going on for most of next year. So in principle for now, the Marine Park will continue to look through its fingers to the fact that there is actually foiling happening over there. But at the beginning of next year, the dialogue will start with the foiling sector because we have to find a solution for this. And we're very keen to find somewhere where the foils can go and foil. We don't want to stop it. We just want to make sure it's in a place where it's safe and where the business can, businesses can operate safely. Any questions about foiling? 
Okay, guys, here we go. January 11th, mark it in your agendas. The 11th of January will be the presentation of the final zoning plan. So this is not quite it. You've had the opportunity again to raise issues. We've had a couple of issues raised. We're gonna go back. We're still in the process of internal dialogue about exactly where and exactly how and exactly how we position and how we show these zones graphically. So all of this is still being discussed internally. All of the points you've brought forward this afternoon are gonna go into that dialogue. If anyone goes home tonight and has an epiphany and suddenly realizes there was something that was burningly urgent that they didn't bring to the table, you have until the 20th of December. We're accepting comments on the draft zoning plan until the 20th of December. Send your comments, please, to info at stinapa.org and they will go into the next round of discussion. But 11th of January, we're coming back with the real deal. And then we, you'll be able to see lines and it will be properly graphically set out. And so you've got from now until the 20th of December to continue any dialogue, to give us any other remaining points. And then we'll have a new zoning plan for luck. Okay. Any last questions, comments? That's a good question. It's not quite the same thing, yeah. right? The, this has been recorded, so do we know, will it be available? The recording will be on YouTube, that's not what you want, you have the map. And I think we can send that out to the mailing list. So if everyone received an invitation, you're on the mailing list. If you didn't receive an invitation, let me know and I'll make sure that you are on the list. Yeah, there's a, there's a list outside, if you write your name, and email, then I'll make sure everyone's asking. But I would really encourage anyone not just to take the map, but to actually look at the presentation because there's more explanation, and otherwise yeah. it's not self-explanatory. Yeah. But also for the locals, I hope that they will also get the chance to understand what they're saying now, that their input should also be there. Absolutely. Okay. Will there be, like, what the map is definitely that's the next step yes there'll need to be signage yes there'll be boys yes there'll be markers first we're kind of patching together the zones in the bay and then things like outreach and signage and so on will follow yes that's the intention yes um, so what what can possibly still change besides uh, taking the input of the stakeholders is it already uh, agreed upon by the local government, but the well Do you want to do that? Do you want to field that? Um, yes, of course we work together with the local government as well, but if you look at the zonation of block, that's actually Stinapa because Stinapa is the manager of the Bonaire National Marine Park, and if you look at LOC, LOC is an area that also has international protection under the International Convention on Wetlands, and that means that the management body needs to be assigned for the management of the nature values in LOC, and that again is Stinapa on the island. So if you look at the current zonation that we're having, it's basically also made by Stinapa. So what we're also discussed with um, the government is that we are going to make this donation. Of course, it's up to the government to make certain policies around it or to look at nature permits and the content of that and, and to, yeah, to act there. But it is up to Stinapa to create a new donation. And we are involved with the local government. So the lo local government is already aware of what we're presenting here today. So the nature policy uh, people uh, are aware of what's in this presentation. Yeah, so it's like 89 percent. This is going to happen. So the new zonation of Stinapa, we are going to present it on January the 11th, and then basically we're going to work with that new zonation and act upon it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone have any more questions? Yes. Oh, uh, do we have a time for it yet? Uh, I thought it was the same time, so three o'clock. Three o'clock here. Yeah. I have a question. Um, after we, after Sinatra has done the donation plan, everybody agreed on it, and there will be points, boards to show 
zones. Um, how are we going to keep control of it? Check. Everybody keeps their no? I, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, so how are we going to do that? Of course we have ranges already that are present in the bay every day. Uh, we also have a new boat. So uh, out of resentment we have got a new boat. That gives us the ability as well to patrol on water. That also makes it more easy for us to approach people who are not yeah, using the donation properly. And it is also first and foremost about information and education. So we don't expect everybody to adhere to the new donation directly because every time you make a change, people also need to have time to adjust to these changes. So our intention is that we have these beautiful watchtowers, then you also will have signs about the new donation. We have operators working in the bay, they will receive like they have the old zonation on the sign, they will also receive a new sign with a new zonation on it. Then, of course, we need to work together as well, all people using the bay, to work in conformity with that zonation. So we perfectly understand that it also takes time for people to adjust to the new zonation. So the focus will not be on an enforcement or anything. It will be really about information, education first, and at a certain time, we also expect people to understand the information. And then we have the ranges to do the information, education, be there, talk with people, answer questions, and so on. Yes, Carl. Do you have a separate meeting with these businesses, or were you supposed to be here today? We invited all the businesses, all the direct stakeholders uh, that are currently working at LOC. So, yeah, they were very welcome to be here today. If these businesses want to have a separate meeting, they can always ask for something. But they were invited, government yeah. was invited, everyone was invited. I mean, we were expecting standing room only and we thought we were going to be eaten alive. And yet, I mean, we've listened, we've heard, we've simplified, we've tried to make things as easy as possible. We have rationale for all of the decisions that are being taken as part of this donation. And we're happy to talk about it. There's no sub-agendas or anything. We're doing this really very openly and very inclusively. And that's the reason that we've also kept the comment period out there until the 20th of December for anyone that couldn't be here in the room with us. But uh, that was it, guys. Showtime. So I think we've got snacks outside and drinks yes. outside. And But thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Thanks.